Lord forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just lift up your hands and appreciate Him again. And just hand over this service to Him that it will be all about Him. In the name of Jesus, that the power of resurrection will be greatly manifested in this service. The power to heal, the power to deliver, the power to break every yoke. But eventually, there's anything that has boldly walked with you into this service, that the anointing will break every yoke. In the name of Jesus, Father, we are grateful this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your resurrection. You are the resurrection and the life. Thank you because your death has brought us life. We celebrate your resurrection this morning. We celebrate your greatness. We celebrate your awesomeness. We celebrate your mightiness. We celebrate you, Jesus, the living God, the only true and living God. We worship you because you have brought through the gates of brass. You have cut the bars of iron asunder. Oh, that man will praise the Lord for his goodness, for his mighty works, for his wonderful works to the house of dominion. Father, we give you praise. We have come this morning thanking you for disappointing the devices of the crafty that their hands could not carry out their enterprises. We have come in confidence because nobody comes into your presence and goes the same way. Therefore, we hand over this service to you. We ask that it will be all about you. In the name of Jesus, as many that have been ministering in one capacity or the other, we ask that the power of God will go ahead and begin to do that that was done on the cross of Calvary. Let there be a physical manifestation in our day, in our time, today in this service. In the name of Jesus, we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. We hold captivity captive because Jesus died and resurrected. Therefore, we resurrect from every situation and circumstances that is contrary to the will and purpose of God in the name of Jesus. And as we step out of here, we begin to live a resurrected life in the name of Jesus. To the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, Lord, we release the blood of Jesus. Let the blood begin to break asunder every burst of arrows. We begin to break asunder every attendant of darkness. We begin to break chains in the name of Jesus. Father, speak to us in this service. Let no man lead the way they have come. No child lead the way they have come. Let the anointing be great in this service. Lord, do that you have proposed to do. And no man will share your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have always been with us. And we are confident that we are in here for a great time. Touch us individually, oh God. Touch us collectively as a church. And move your church forward in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare this service open in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit. And let somebody shout a resurrected amen.
Easter Sunday. We are here to celebrate our maker. Hallelujah. We're going to dance and praise him. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
fade away. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You made the way. You made the way, Jesus. You made the way, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you made the way. Oh, yes, the Lord, you made the way. You made the way. You made the way. Let's lift our voice to the Lord, to the King of Kings, to the I am that I am, to the risen King. He's not dead, he's alive. He's not in the grave, he's alive. Lift your voice and worship him. Magnify the risen King. Magnify him that, that is not in the grave, but is alive. Magnify him that is mighty. Magnify him that is awesome. Worship his majesty. If you are serving a living God, give him praise and worship his name. Say, Lord, thank you because you didn't only die. You are not only buried, but you are alive forever. If the Lord is alive in you, thank him and worship his name. Magnify him. Magnify his name. Thank you because you are alive in me. Thank you because you are alive in your church. Thank you because you are not dead. You are alive. Worship his majesty. Give him praise. Give him praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Some of us, we are still watching. You don't know what the Lord has done for you. 
if you go to the grave shout hallelujah if you see hear any response then you will run because it's silence but living souls are here because the risen king is here i want us to lift her voice and say lord thank you because as you are alive i'm alive thank you because lord because you are risen i am risen thank you because lord because you are on the throne i am seated with christ far above principalities far above powers far above rulers of darkness far above spiritual wickedness in high places say lord thank you because i am alive with you I appreciate the lord give him praise in the name of jesus lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you last year you were here and you are here this year again because the lord made it possible how many of you you are wheeled through wheelchair here how many of you you are you you, you are using when you are seen through the heads of glasses because the lord has helped you here give him praise worship his majesty he has given you reason to appreciate him he has given you reason to magnify his name thank him worship his majesty in jesus much less they will pray when when they came to the tomb and they saw the angel he said why are you seeking the living among the dead because the christ you are seeking is not dead is alive and because he's alive is activating every dead thing within your body do you know what he says in romans chapter 8 verse 11 he said if the spirit that raised jesus from the dead dwell in you he said he that raised jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body even by the spirit of the lord i want you to open your mouth and say father because you are alive everything that is dead in me i command you to come alive in the name of jesus open your mouth and begin to decree whatever that is dead or whatever that is about to give way come alive in me come alive in the name of jesus say lord come alive anything that is dead in my member in the name of jesus come alive because i have the reason king because jesus is alive in jesus mighty name we pray some persons they don't still know the weight of what they are saying when lazarus was dead for four days he was bound when jesus came to the tomb he said remove the stone and they opened the tomb and when he came out, he was still bound. And he said, lose him. We are going to ask the Lord and say, as many that are bound by any fetters, from any coven, from any realm, be it in high places, be it in, in this terrestrial world, that we command them to be losing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's open our mouth and begin to decree. And say, Father... We command as many that are still bound be loose from every bound, from every fetters in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. This is the resurrection morning. Whatever that is dead must come alive. Whatever that is dead must come alive. Whoever that is still bound by the evil one, whoever that is bound by ignorance we command them loose in the name of jesus we say loose in the name of jesus we say loose in the name of jesus we say loose in the name of jesus be free from every bondage be free from every bondage in the name of jesus male palaba kabalembo shekalabra sento libria in the name of Jesus, 
In Jesus' matchless name, we are praying. Amen. Now we're going to pray a prayer. You see, when, when the enemy came to Ziglag, and they raided Ziglag, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, the Bible says that David inquired of the Lord. He says, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord said, pursue. Overtake. Don't only overtake. He said, recover. So we're going to cry unto the Lord. This morning is my morning of total recovery. Begin to declare. And say, I recover all. Whatever the enemy has taken. In the name of Jesus. I recover all. Because this is the resurrection morning. I recover all. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. And begin to declare. I will not only come here to witness miracles. I will be a miracle myself. Because I'm recovering all. In the name of Jesus. I'm recovering all. What the enemy has taken. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the resurrection king. In the name of Jesus. Laba shata libra. Lepo se kalaba. Lepo ikaba zekete po libra. Some are see watching. Some are see watching. Just ask the Lord. I recover her. My spiritual life. I recover her. My physical. I recover her. In all facets. I recover her. In the name of Jesus. Ma lepa laba soto shilaba. Reke po soto liya. In Jesus' mouth, let's they will pray. As we round up, let's sing this song from the bottom of our heart. Let's worship the King. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let it just prostrate fall. Let it just prostrate. Bring forth, bring forth the roll, yeah, the crown him, oh, and crown him, 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 Easter, brethren, please you can sit as we take our Bible reading this morning. Our, Bible, our first Bible reading is taken from the book of Psalms. The book of Psalm 118. We are going to take 1 to 2, then we jump to 14 to 24. Psalm, our Bible reading again this morning is taken from the book of Psalm 118. We are looking at the first two verses, 1 to 2, then we jump to 20, 14 to 24, Psalm 108, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of dominion say that his mercy endureth forever. Then we go to verse 14, through to verse 24. The Lord is my strength and song, and is become my salvation. Verse 15. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The hand right of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. 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 Verse 18. The Lord had chastened me so, but he had not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord, unto whose the righteous shall enter, I will praise thee, for thou hast had me and had become my salvation. Verse 22. The stone 
who is the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 24 and the last one. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we are taking our second Bible reading, which is found in the book of Luke, chapter 24. We are looking at verses 1 through to 12. Luke chapter 24, from 1 to 12. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found out the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabouts, Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Verse 8. And they remembered his words. And they returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, who told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Verse 12. And the last one. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at what which was come to pass. This is the word of the Lord. And may the Lord bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Praise the rising and risen and alive Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you happy to be in the church this morning? Yes, I am very excited and happy as well. So on behalf of the church, we joyfully welcome you all to Dominion Cathedral today. Uh, this is the region 15 headquarters of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the America. Um, we have the announcement for today, so please pay a very good attention. Take notes of all these announcements, and they will be beneficial to you. Uh, we want to remind the Elders Fellowship that your monthly meeting for um, the month of March comes up today, immediately after the service. So all our elders identified elders from the age 40 and above, this is a time for all of you are to come together and have your monthly meeting. Uh, this Tuesday coming up, April 2nd, is our special anniversary Holy Communion service. And this is going to be happening at 7.30 p.m. Are we excited that this is the season for us to celebrate the wonderfulness of God over Dominion Cathedral? Please, let me see your excitement. Yes, yes. God has been with us and helping us to dominate for 20, 27 years. And we will start this anniversary with uh, Holy Communion, dining with the Lord. Please come and have a supper, believing that God is infinite mercy, will perfect all your miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. And also, we'll be having a three days fasting and prayer just as we do monthly. So the one for the month of April starts tomorrow, um, Monday, April 1st. And this will end on Wednesday, April 3rd. And as usual, we'll be having a teleconference prayer every day for these three days. So if you have not ever joined this prayer, please take this number down and make sure that you join this time around. The number to call is 701-791-9920. 
0-800-222-0020. So please make sure you join the prayer line. And this happens from 5 p.m. to 5.30 daily. Uh, the children ministry is in their need of teachers and volunteers to serve in various capacity within the uh, children ministry. So if God is leading it in your heart to serve or volunteer in the children ministry, you can see the coordinators. We have Sister Titilayo Ayon today, or you can see Sister Oshana George. They can be reached on these numbers, 973-202-8147. Also, 917-582-3786. And God bless us as we take note of these numbers. The 2024 registrations for the ministers and workers conference. This is all for all our workers in the House of Dominion and the ministers. Uh, the theme for this conference is the glory ahead. Um, this starts from June 19 to 21st. The registration is now open. So we could all go and register. The link is on the website of the RCCG um, NA. So you go to rccgna.org. So let all our workers and our minister take note of that. And God bless us as we take this action and be part of the glory ahead in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, of course, as we have mentioned earlier, to the glory of God, Domina Cathedral is turning 27 this year. Yes. The anniversary starts on Tuesday, as we've mentioned, for the Holy Communion. And the theme for this year's anniversary is believe. Believe. And this is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 23. Let's continue to pray along this year anniversary as the activities as listed. Tuesday, uh, special Holy Communion service at 7.30. Friday, April 5th. Um, there will be an anniversary prayer conference right here at the sanctuary from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And we have ministering is our guest minister, Pastor Tunde uh, Badru. Uh, he is a senior pastor of the RCCG King's Palace. And this is at Katy, um, Texas. And we also will have um, a ministration from a saxophonist, uh, Kunle Olulesi. And um, it's from the Dominion, Dominion Ministers. Uh, we want to let our Dominion Ministers and the pastor um, uh, be aware that it's going to be an awesome time in the presence of God. And we all will be here to celebrate uh, with our church as we turn 27. Uh, Sunday, April 7th will be our anniversary service at 10 a.m. So everyone, please take note of that and be ready to bless the name of the Lord. Uh, at this point in time, I would like to bring to the altar our senior pastor, Pastor Dr. Tony Laoye. God bless you. Way out in the Aleutian Islands, getting ready to leave and go back to Anchorage and then home. And I had a ticket in my pocket to get on an airplane. The pastor came up and he said, listen, I can save you money. I said, how's that? He said, I flew a small airplane up here, and I fly a small airplane, and I can take you in my little airplane, and you can save your ticket. And this did not sound, I said, gee, thank you so very, very much, but I've got this ticket. We'll just make our way on home, me and this other lawyer with me. He said, no, 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 you got to do it, you got to do it. And against every better judgment I had, I said, okay. Well, we went out to the airport, took us by his little plane, and I looked at it. And I thought, well, one good thing, it's shiny. Then he walked around it. We got in. He's on the left front. I'm on the right front. The other lawyer's sitting right behind me. And he started it up. And it started up just fine. Well, we taxied out. I said, should we pray? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. We normally don't. I said, well, this time we're going <laughs> to. And I'm telling you, I prayed five, eight minutes. I prayed a long time. We went and got on the runway. He starts down the runway, the plane lifted off ever so gently, and we start climbing, and it's wonderful. Not a problem in the world. 
We started climbing and we flew probably three, four minutes and something happened that will never leave my mind. The pilot turned to me and he said, we're going in the clouds and I can't fly in clouds. They make me pass out. I said, clouds make you do what? <laughs> now it's been cloudy all day. And we go right up into the clouds and you can't see anything. And he looks at me and his eyes roll back in his head. And he starts mumbling and he passes out, passed out cold. Now I grabbed him and I shook him and I said, come on, you got to wake up so I can kill you. Now we're in the clouds flying along with no pilot. And my friend in the back seat said, we're dead, aren't we? I said, there's a very good chance of that. Yes. He said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. But there was a radio right there and I handed him the microphone and I said, start asking for help. So he's in the back seat reaching up and he said, hello, hello. We didn't know any proper radio etiquette. All we were saying was hello. And somebody answered back, hello, hello. Don't you guys know proper radio etiquette? And I said, give it to me. I said, Tell, we don't know nothing. Tell him we're in an airplane with a passed out pilot and we don't know how to fly this plane. The guy said, I'm a freighter flying out of Anchorage on the way to Tokyo. And he said, you're telling me you have nobody who can fly that plane with you? I said, tell him that's correct. Now you gotta understand, I am sweating bullets. He said, the first thing I'm going to do is start circling so I don't lose you because I'll fly out of range of your radio and you won't have me anymore. And he said, I'm going to get Anchorage Emergency for you. And Anchorage Emergency will be the people that can maybe help you try to save your life. After about five minutes, Anchorage came on, said, we understand you have a passed out pilot. And those of you do not know how to fly that plane. We said, that's right. They said, well, the first thing we got to do is find you. And I'll never forget what this man at Anchorage said. He said, my job is to get you home safe. He said, that's my job. But he said, here's the deal. If you want me to get you home safe, you got to promise me you'll obey my voice. He said, you can't see me, but I can see you. And he said, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to die. When you can't see anything, you have no idea how disorientated you become. Finally, he said, okay, I found you. Now hear me clear. He said, you're four minutes from a mountain. He said, you're going to crash in that mountain and die. Follow my voice. I never said, I have to follow your voice. Is that reasonable? You see, I understood without his voice, I had nothing. And do you understand? Without God's voice, you have nothing. Nothing. Finally, he got us turned and he said, I'm freezing all the traffic in the area. He said, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get you to Anchorage and there's a lot of weather between you and Anchorage. You're in for a rough ride. And he said, I want you to hear me. I don't want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm, just my voice. He said, if you start watching the storm, you will die. But I'll take you through it. Now, because they cleared all the traffic, several pilots, those nighttime freighters, those 747s started talking to us. They said, we're praying for you, men. You're going to make it. But listen to the voice. That's the key. They said, trust the voice. You realize your head is full of voices. And everybody in this world wants to talk to you. And everybody wants to be the controlling voice. And God says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. I want you to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice. Finally, we went through the worst of the weather, but there was still more. And then the voice came back and it said, now, I'm going to line you up. He said, I'm going to bring you in right down the runway. And at the foot of the runway are some lights and they're in the form of a cross. He said, don't you forget this. The cross is the way home. Finally, he's bringing us down. We still can't see anything. And all he kept saying is, stay with me. My sheep, the Bible says, hear my voice and they follow me. Finally, just a couple hundred feet off the ground, we saw the cross. I landed the plane. In fact, I landed it seven times. Finally, it all came to a stop. And the minute we stopped, the pilot woke up. The voice said, thanks for listening. I watch them crash and burn all the time because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand I'm the one who can see them even when they can't see me. 
but they get the voices in their head and they kill themselves. They self-destruct. Thanks for listening to the voice. Then they put us in a motel room in about four in the morning to knock at my door. I opened the door and a man was standing there. He said, hello, David. I said, you're the voice. You're the one who got me home. He said, I am. Do you understand one day you're going to stand before him and say, you were the voice. You're the voice that brought me home. If you're not on that altar as a living sacrifice, your head's full of voices. And then we wonder why kids crash and burn. We wonder why marriages are shattered. And the Lord's saying, I'm the one who has the voice. All I can remember is that voice saying, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't listen to what's going on in your head and don't watch the storm. Stay with me. And I'll take you through. Tonight you have a God who has promised to take you through. A living sacrifice, holy. I was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. Praise the Lord. If you're excited to be part of this Easter Sunday of 2024, come on, rise on your feet, wave your hand to Jesus, and shout hallelujah. Please sit down, please have your seat. Good morning, Dominion. Online and on site, good morning. What a joy. What a privilege, again, to be eyewitnesses of this last day of month. We give God all the glory for keeping us. We celebrate the faithfulness of our God. And I welcome you to his presence today. And I pray that the resurrection power will manifest in your lives in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome our royal ambassadors. Today is family Sunday, the last Sunday. Welcome again to church. I welcome your parents though. Today is the day parents and teenagers born together. And I pray that your bonding will be permanent in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. He is alive. Jesus is no more in the grave. Hallelujah. So once again, I want you to celebrate the risen Savior. The only one who died and rose again. He is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's raise his banner because Jesus is no more in the grave. You can no more remain in the grave. You are coming out of every grave. Every grave that the devil has put you, I say in the name of Jesus, by the power of resurrection, you are coming out in the name of Jesus. Somebody scream, I am coming out. Say it with a believing voice. I am coming out. You are coming out. You are coming out. Every other voice is in your head. Will be flushed out. You will only hear the voice of. Of God. We enjoy. That little clip that we watch. Right? The clip. Jesus did not promise us a challenge-free life. He didn't promise us a storm-free life. But guess what? He promises you a safe landing. You will land safe. I say you will land safe. We have no idea what this life is about. But guess what? 
He knows. So help me tell somebody, listen to his voice. Listen to what? Listen to his voice. But mind you, there are many voices that are trying to distract you. Tell yourself, Royal Ambassador, say, I will not listen to voice of distractions. Amen. Moving forward, the resurrection power will empower you to recognize the voice of God. I missed all the voices that you are listening to. The Bible says, and God raised the Lord, Jesus, and he will raise you up by his power. I decree he will raise you up by his power in the name of Jesus. He will not only stop there. The power of God, the resurrection power, will raise you up from the grips of sickness. If you are sick today, whether you are online or on site, I say end has come to your sickness. God will deliver you from the grips of death. Premature death and sickness. In the name of Jesus. You will rise from that bed of sickness. You will rise. You will rise from sickness. From weakness. From pain. Say I am rising up. You are rising up with a major testimony. I want to say to somebody here by the spirit of the living God. You will testify again. I said to somebody, you will laugh again. No more sorrow. No more sadness. No more sickness. The stone of limitation will be rolled away from your life. No more limitations in the name of Jesus. Your head will no longer be bowed in shame. You are rising up. From shame and from reproach. In the name of Jesus. Every dead project in your life. Every dead organ in your body. Every toxic organ. Will be healed by the power of resurrection. In the name of Jesus. Let me look at somebody and say just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Yes. Believe. Believe. And we want to thank God for this resurrection morning. Hallelujah. By the special grace of God, it is not by accident that the Easter season and the anniversary, 27th anniversary, collide this year. Hallelujah. I want you to believe that God wants to settle you. Hallelujah. And God will settle you. The anniversary blessings and miracles have started rolling. And I pray that you will not miss your own. In the name of Jesus, we are kicking off this year anniversary with the Holy Communion on Tuesday. The Holy Communion is the power of God. One of the voices that God asks us to listen to is that voice. Every time we appear for communion, our spirit, soul, and body is refreshed and renewed by the power on high. The blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus will transform your lives. Please, don't miss the communion. Amen? Amen? What medicine cannot do, what doctors cannot do, the blood will do for you. In the name of Jesus, by the special grace of God, this Tuesday is our anniversary communion service. Amen. Your body will be quickened by the blood of Jesus. I say your body, your weak bodies will be quickened by the body and the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Also on Friday, we are going to have a prayer and praise conference here. Prayer and praise conference is going to start at 7 p.m. Invite your friends. Let me look at somebody and say, invite your friends. Hallelujah. We're going to have in the house Pastor Tunde Badru. Uh, they can roll the tape, engineering. So tell somebody, see you there. I will see you on Tuesday, and I will see you on Friday. And we shall celebrate together on Sunday. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord Jesus, and enjoy the rest of this hour. I believe, say it, say it. RCCGA, Dominion Cathedral, New Jersey 27. Glory be to God. I want to say big congratulations to Pastor Dr. Tony Lai on this great achievement. And of course, to all the membership of RCCG Dominion Cathedral on this 27th anniversary celebration with the theme, Believe. What a theme. I therefore want to invite everyone in the New Jersey New York area, indeed all over the world, I am going to be there live, you know, ministering with other, you know, great men and women of God. It's going to be so great from April the 5th on Friday. Friday is going to be prayer conference where we are coming to believe God for the miraculous. There will be miracle signs and wonders, great impartation, great elevation, promotion, protection, provision, everything we may ever believe God for is possible. Because Mark 9 in verse 23, Jesus Christ himself speaking, that if only you can believe that all things are possible to him that believe. Join us. Let's believe God together for the supernatural. You will not regret coming. Again, the venue is RCCD Dominion Cathedral. Date is April the 5th is a Friday from 7 p.m. to about 10 p.m. All through to Sunday with the anniversary Thanksgiving service at 10 a.m. the same day. God bless you. See you there. I'm on my way. Let everybody come and believe God together for the miraculous. Shalom and congratulations again. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our Hello, hands together. Hello, beautiful good women with purpose. How are you all doing? My name is Margaret AKJ. I'm the secretary of the Good Women Fellowship. I want to invite you to our breakfast prayer meeting, which should take place on the 13th of April, 2024. Venue is the church auditorium. Time is 8.30 a.m. to 12 noon. And the theme is the mind. As you all know, the mind is powerful. And lot of it consists of so many issues of life. The Bible said, to set your mind on the things of the flesh is death. But to set your mind on the things of the spirit is life and peace. And we all want peace, right? The Bible also said, do not be confirmed to the things of this world, but be you transformed by the renewal of your mind. Come and renew your mind. Come, let's reason together. Come prepared, invite someone. It's true, it promised to be an interactive and fun filled moment. Don't miss it. Come and descend the mind of God towards you. We love you. God bless you. See you there. Bye bye. All right, let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time and his mercies endure it forever um the next thing that we want to do is to specially welcome those who are worshiping with us for the very first time uh we want to show you the love of god we want to tell you how much we love you and if you are doing so just kindly rise up uh wherever you are can we just clap for them as they uh, as they rise up thank you very much Thank you. Uh, you may please step forward. There's a seat. Uh, we've reserved uh, the front seat for you. Kindly uh, step forward, please. Choir. 
Welcome to Dominion. We love you. You are welcome. Welcome to Dominion. You are welcome. Welcome to Dominion. You are welcome. You are welcome. Every Tuesday, Bible study. You are welcome. Every Sunday, Sunday service. You are welcome. Welcome to Dominion. You are welcome. You are welcome. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue parmi nous. Si tu es l'un de nos visiteurs de ce matin, on t'en supplie de te mettre debout et ce serait un plaisir de te voir. Buenos días a cada uno de ustedes que está aquí hoy visitando nos. Si hoy es su primer día de estar aquí, por favor, pondez les pieds y sería un placer de verte. Bonjour à chaque belle famille haïtienne qui la matin. Hein? Si matin c'est la première fois que vous là parmi nous, nous demandé au temps pris au café un petit campé et nous sommes trop contents pour nous. Voir. Merci un peu. Amen. Je pense que c'est français, français et créole. Ok. All right. Uh, can you please stand up, please? All right. Um, so I'm the only one seeing you, but the whole congregation, they want to see you. Just turn your faces around uh, to the back. And let's, let's show them the love of God. Thank you. You can, you can turn back. Okay, so I'm going to do the introduction of who we are. And um, before I do that, I just want you to tell us your name. We invited you. And then uh, we uh, pass the uh, mic around. Okay. Thank you for welcoming me. My name is Adeba Milo Noba Milo. I'm on a visit from Nigeria. I'm invited by Mr. and Mrs. Jide Adenichi. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm invited by my daughter, uh, Bomi Alawo. Praise the Lord. Yeah, my name is Omo. Um, we came actually to see a friend and a sister from Atlanta, Bumi Alao, and that's where we're here this morning. Okay, my name is Camila. This is my daughter. We came because of Constance Osifo. Okay. Hi, my name is Ashley, and I was invited by my dad. Welcome. Uh, we have a new guest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his name is uh, Iriolua Emmanuel Olagoke. Sorry. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> invited by the parents, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, we are Dominion Cathedral um, under the redeemed Christian Church of God. We are the uh, Region 15 headquarters. We are being led by our senior pastor, Pastor Dr. Toyin Lawe, uh, under the leadership of our general overseer, uh, Pastor Enoch Adewe. Uh, God has given us a platform as a church uh, where we exercise the domineering power of Christ to set men free from the power of darkness. And it's our prayer that uh, whenever you come in, in town and you want to fellowship with God's people, you are always invited and welcomed uh, in our midst. It's our prayer that God will meet with you today in his, in his resurrection power in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I believe you've been given uh, some forms to fill. Uh, just fill them legibly. And um, after the service, uh, you'll be shown more of our hospitality. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. All elders in the service shout hallelujah. The elder choir are here to minister to the people of God. And uh, we pray you will all be blessed as a minister in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Encourage the elders. Let's put our hands together.
Amen. We are really excited to see our elder doing exploit for God. I would just like you to appreciate it by clapping your hands with a standing ovation unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we give God praise. No wonder the scripture says, even at old age, they will still be doing exploit. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we pray for more strength, more grace, more unction, more anointing in the name of Jesus. If there is a place to be on Sunday, this place is a place to be. You see our elder, we celebrate you, sir. We celebrate you, man. God bless you. As you remain standing, we want to give our offering unto God. Remember, God gave the best. Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A version says, no, let me say, he gave his only, one and only, one and only. God gave the best. And every time we have a portion to give, he wants us to give the best. So please package your offering, your tithe, as we give unto God with celebration. And for those who are watching us online, package your offering too and give on this very day. You can sell your offering and your tithe to nine. 73704-3904 or, domin or donation at rccg dominionnj.org and as you do that the Lord bless you in the precious name of Jesus Amen. in person during service you can give you can walk in here on church office during the while of uh, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday to Saturday and if you ever fall you want to give we trust God that God is going to reward you abundantly in the precious name of Jesus. So with excitement this morning as choir lived us in praises, give cheerfully. And the Lord Almighty will bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today. On the cross, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
the living Jesus. Amen. Amen. If usher has not gotten to you and you feel like giving, hallelujah, you are the Lord that will shout hallelujah now. Okay, God bless you, usher. And God bless you, you know, when the other has already set the stage, you know, <laughs> thank God for the way we gave this morning. And for those who are online giving, the Lord will bless you and reward you greatly in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this great privilege to give unto you. On a very special day like this, we celebrate your resurrection. We appreciate you, O God. Thank you, our Father, for giving us your best, the only begotten Son. Lord, for redemption and for bringing us back to yourself. We give you praise and glory, O God, in Jesus' precious name. Lord, we thank you for giving unto us to give back unto you. Thank you, Father, for everyone who have given this morning, both online and on-site. Thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. On this exalted altar of the Most High God, we speak blessing, increase, promotion, abundance, fullness into your life. In the name of Jesus, that the Lord God Almighty will reward you. Your level of love will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. And for those who want to give or give more than what they have given, but the chances are not there. Father, we pray that Lord, please open the door for them. Amen. Bless them, O oh God. Amen. Teach all of us how to give Amen. in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. And we say a better amen. amen. God bless you. Be, be, be seated. As we service continue, we want to invite Sister Biola Olaguki for her special number and her testimony. 
Hallelujah. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Jesus is. Jesus, every knee bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I am so happy to be back here. Oh, Jesus is Lord. And I want to really thank the church. I want to thank our senior pastor for this privilege given to me to share this testimony. Our God is faithful. Through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, through it all. And my family are now here to testify for that gift of the Lord the Lord has given. Waiting on the fruit of the womb for 13 years. And he did it at his own time. He did it at his own time. I want to use this medium to appreciate our senior pastor, mommy, Pastor Dr. Tony Laoye. Please, can you help me appreciate the Lord on behalf of our mother? Thank you so much, mommy. Mommy, what mommy did is more than what a, a mother would do to a biological daughter. If it was possible, it would have, she would have been calling me every day. The Lord is faithful. Mommy, God bless you. The anointing of the Lord upon your life will not run dry. The presence of the Lord in your life, God will continue to be with you. The presence of the Lord will not depart from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I also want to use this medium to thank the Lord for my sweetheart. My husband, hey, God is faithful. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, sir, anoint you, increase you on all sides, sir, in the name of Jesus. I also want to appreciate the prayer department. Thank you so much. I want to appreciate the newborn department. I want to appreciate Victory Choir. I want to appreciate everyone. I want to appreciate the church. God is faithful. And I also want to encourage somebody here. You are waiting on God for something. God is able to do it. He makes every impossibility possible. He's an awesome God. And you are in the right place. This is Dominion Cathedral. And we say that this is where our expectations become manifestation. I want you to believe that every time, whether you are listening online or on site, Dominion Cathedral, we say our expectation become manifestation. You need to believe that. Hallelujah. And so finally, even before this miracle came, before the miracle of the baby, I was just doing my thing. You know, there's a song that says it was walking behind the scene. To obey Chuku, he did it for me. So God, God is always there. He knows what you're going through. Just keep doing what he says you should do. Peradventure, you are here, you are like, okay, until when God, until when he does this miracle, that's when you're going to work for him. Please don't do that. Be encouraged. Whatever God has placed in your hands to do, don't be idle, just do it. And God will work, work for you, will come through for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So while I was, before the miracle came, God gave me some songs and one of the songs that I've been working on, and I just want to dedicate that song to the almighty God for this great testimony, for giving us the Riolua Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Please, engineering, can you help me display? Please, let's appreciate the engineering. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was a wonderful song. More blessings to you, Sister Biola. May God continue to show us his wonders this year in Jesus' name. It's time for our congregational hymn. So if we can kindly rise up and turn into an e-bulletin. Hallelujah. Quiet. Yeah. 
name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We bless you. We worship and adore you because you are Lord. Thank you for this privilege to gather here in your presence to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that even as we listen to your word, O oh Lord, let your word come from the throne of grace directly in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't want to speak of myself, but Lord, speak to us this morning in the name of Jesus. And as your word comes forth, O oh Lord, let the power of resurrection begin to work wonders in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let lives be reset, be reset in the mighty name of Jesus. Let health be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise. We bless you. Take all the glory, Lord, for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed in jesus mighty name we have prayed church please be seated praise the lord thank you very much pastor for this privilege thank you so much brethren today we'll be talking about the power of resurrection he arose up from the grave he arose Hallelujah. We know very well the story how Christ laid down his life for us. How he was wounded 
He was flogged. He was mocked. He was arrested by the chief priest. They hanged him on a cross. To them, it was over. To them, it was the end. To them, that was the end of all these doctrines that he was talking about. But thank God it was not the end. For he arose. He arose. Hallelujah. He died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb. They rolled the stone over the tomb. In fact, they wanted to make sure he could not escape. Because he had told them on the third day he will rise again. That he will die, but he will rise the third day. So in order to ensure that he did not escape, the scribes, the Pharisees, they decided they were going to appoint the guards to make sure there would be no way that the disciples would steal his body and claim that he arose. But they got it wrong. Because the same thing they tried to do to prevent what he had said from happening was the same thing that now double confirmed that yes, he arose because they were there guarding the tomb and he rose. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. In Luke 24, 1 to 12 that we read earlier, the women went there. They went to the grave hoping to be able to dress the body. They had ointment with them, but they found that Jesus was no longer in the tomb. Instead, they met angels there that told them, that didn't you remember he told you? He said it so many times, but even the disciples didn't believe. They had to come in. The Bible says they were perplexed. They were, they were confused. They could not understand. How can someone who had died resurrect again? Praise the Lord. He arose. And it is the power that brought him back to life that we're talking about today, the power of resurrection. Somebody say the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. That's the power that brought him to life after he was crucified. It's the same power that we as followers of Christ, we as believers, we have access to the same power. The same power that brought him up from the dead. We have it today. We have access to, uh, to it. And that power will do wonders in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of Jesus is a source of strength. is a source of comfort, a source of hope that we can rely on every day. And it's a reminder that with God, all things are possible. With God, what? All things are possible. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians 1, verses 19 and 20. Ephesians 1, 19 and 20. It says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the walking of his mighty power, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Praise the Lord. On today, which is Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. We remember the pain, the shame that he bore for us. We remember everything that he had to go through. We remember what our text earlier, Psalm 118, verses 22 to 24 said that the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Brethren, let us rejoice because he's risen. Because the resurrection power, resurrection power is for us. is available for us to tap into. And we will benefit from it in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. What is the significance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? I'm sure we know this. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ is very important for us as Christians. It's very important. The resurrection power that we have through Jesus gives us the ability to overcome sin and temptation, to find hope, to find joy, even in difficult circumstances, and to live with the assurance that we will one day be raised to a new life. The assurance that one day will be raised to a new life. John 3.16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ tells us that we have access to eternal life. We will have everlasting life. And the Lord will grant that to us in the mighty name of Jesus by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we were redeemed. 
we were redeemed. Our sins and everything, he bore them all. Remember in the past, in the Old Testament, they had to go to the chief priest. The chief priest had to first sacrifice for himself, cleanse himself, and then people will come and confess their sins. They will bring their sin offering, and then the chief priest will pray for them. He will make the offering, and then their, their offerings will be accepted. But now we've been redeemed. We're no longer bound by the law. We are now bound by grace. We have been redeemed by grace. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it was that opportunity for us to get redeemed. Praise the Lord. No wonder Job said in Job 19, verse 25 to 27. Job 19, 25 to 27. He could see it coming even when he wasn't there before. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart yearns within me. Praise the Lord. The the resurrection power redeems us. It gives us that opportunity to be rid of sin. We are redeemed of all of the evil, all the sin that we've done. God has paid the price for us. Jesus has died for us and he has risen again so that we can secure our salvation. By his death and resurrection, our salvation is secured. Praise the Lord. When he gave up the ghost, the curtains of the temple tore in, in two. Now, the curtains of the temple separated the general populace from the holies of holies. Only the chief priests could go in. When that curtains got was torn, the, the holiness, the presence of God was brought to us. So now we have his presence within us. We have his presence living with us by virtue of the resurrection power. Praise the Lord. Our sins were wiped away. Again, another important thing to note about the power of resurrection was that Jesus Christ defeated Satan. He defeated Satan by being killed and resurrecting. He defeated Satan. He defeated death. Because typically when somebody dies and they put him there, that person isn't coming back. But he went there, he conquered Satan, he conquered death. And that's what the power of resurrection means for us. It means that Satan has no power over us unless we give him power. He has no power over us unless we let him. He has no authority over us unless we decide to see the authority that we have received as a result of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Again, like I said, he defeated death. And now as Christians, we're no longer afraid of death itself because we know we have eternal life. Like Job said, even after our bodies are destroyed, we have him that is able to keep us till eternity. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 to 26. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 to 26. I'll read quickly. It said, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruit then, when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God, the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his foot. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. By the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he took authority. He conquered that. And as Christians, we're no longer afraid of that because we have a home that we're going to. Praise the Lord. One other thing that the resurrection of, the, of our Lord gives us is that assurance that is coming back again. The assurance that is coming back again. The assurance of the second coming. Remember, the disciples were there and he told them everything. He told them how he was going to die. But it was difficult for them to understand. It was difficult for the people to understand. 
And when he then resurrected, it was even difficult, more difficult for a lot of people to understand. But the fact that he had resurrected now tells us categorically that yes, there is a second coming. And we can hold on to them because he's risen. Praise the Lord. John 4 verse 3. Open your Bibles with me to John 4 verse 3. John 4 verse 3. I'll read from the NIV. It says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Because he told us that he has gone to prepare a place for us. So we know he's coming back for us. We know he's coming back for us. I remember that song that says, he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He went away and promised that he's coming back again. He's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. Oh, glory, hallelujah. He's coming back again. Because he resurrected, we know he's coming back. We can hold on to that. We can, ask, we, we can, we can walk towards being able to make it when it comes to collect his saints. Praise the Lord. In Revelation 12, verses 12 and 13, it, it told us again in Revelation 12, 12 and 13. It says, Behold, I come, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So as Christians, as we strive to live holy, as we strive to do the work of God, we know, we are assured that he's coming back again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What are the benefits of the power of resurrection? We've talked about some of them already, the benefits of the power of resurrection. One is that he has given us power to overcome sin. Praise the Lord. He has given us power to overcome sin, power to dominate over the flesh, power to dominate over all the wiles of this world because we're now carrying in us the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is there to convict us, to tell us, no, don't do that. And if we listen to him, we, we, we take control of that power and we are able to command, to have command over every form of sin. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, those who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. He has given us power to overcome sin, to dominate over sin, to dominate over any form of condemnation. We're free from condemnation of the law. Because he resurrected. Praise the Lord. Another thing that the power of, the, another benefit of the power of resurrection is that the dead receive life. We had a prayer session this morning where the minister who led us talked about that. The dead received life. The power of resurrection was the one that raised a man that had died. After three days, he rose up again. If you tap into that power, everything that may be dead in your life will receive power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that may be dead in your life will receive life in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans 8, 11 tells us that if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. If you hold on to that power of resurrection, it doesn't matter what the sickness is, what the evil is that you're dealing with. The Bible is telling us clearly that the same power that raised him from the dead can raise and re remove such sicknesses in the mighty name of Jesus. The dead will receive life. Life will be given back. We know the story of Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37. In Ezekiel 37, he was in the valley of dry bones. And God asked him, can these bones live? And he said, God, only you know. Right? He knew better than to try to answer differently. He knew that there was nothing God could not do. Do we know as well that there's nothing God cannot do? The power of resurrection is out there. The same bones that were dry, that had no life, they came together. They received life. There was bread into them. The bread of God into them. And they came to life. Praise the Lord. We also talked about Lazarus this morning as we were praying. He had been dead for four days. But Christ called him out. He said, come forth. The man that had been dead for four days, that people believe will have been stinking. And I'm not talking about people who didn't like him. His sister told Jesus 
that he would be stinking by now. There is no need to open this place. But he called him forth, and by the power of resurrection, he received life. He came back to life. That power of resurrection will raise every dead tissue in your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every dead situation will receive life in the name of Jesus. Another example that we see after Jesus has left, Dorcas died. And Peter was in Joppa. They sent for him in Acts 9, 36 to 42. They sent for Peter. And Peter laid her down. And then he shouted, Tabitha, arise. And by the power of resurrection, the one that had been dead rose up. She received life. That same power is at work for us today. And everything in our lives will receive life in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of resurrection, healing is guaranteed. Healing is guaranteed. We read earlier that the same power that gave, brought Jesus from the dead can quicken your mortal bodies. That another version of the Bible says can give life to your mortal bodies, to our mortal bodies. So by the power of resurrection, sicknesses, diseases can be turned around. God can heal us by the power of resurrection and we will receive our healings in the mighty name of Jesus why do I say that? In Isaiah 53 verse 5, Isaiah 53 verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoings, he was crushed for all those things. The punishment that is required for our well-being fell upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. Another version of the Bible says, by his stripes, we were healed. So we've been healed long before we were even born. We just need to tap into that power of resurrection and our healing, our health will be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of resurrection also gives us the power to find hope. Every hopeless situation in your lives will be turned around as you hold on to that power of resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus. Because Christ in us is our hope of glory. Colossians 1.27. Colossians 1.27. It says, To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That Christ is in you, it gives you hope. We see every now and then, you know, on TV, celebrities or someone that, that looked so happy, committed suicide, gave up on life, uh, depressed. But in our own case, we have Christ. And Christ is us, is our hope of glory. And the reason people commit suicide or do those things is because they feel hopeless. They feel that nothing else can happen. Can, can happen. Nothing is going to turn around for good for them. However, as Christians, because we believe in God and because we hold on to that power of resurrection, Christ in us is our hope of glory. Our hope is not founded on the things that we can see. Praise the Lord. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know he holds our future, we know that life is worth, him, worth living because he lives. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4.16 tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we know that because it lives, because of that power of resurrection, we can come boldly to that throne of grace because he's there as our advocate, and we know we'll find grace, we'll find mercy, and we'll find mercy always in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of that cross, because he died on that cross, liberty is granted. Chains are broken. We talked about that earlier in, in, in the prayer session. Chains are broken. Liberty is granted. We are liberated from every chain, every shackle of this world. Once we hold on to the power of resurrection. Why? Because in Acts 10, 38, the Bible tells us that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good. And he, was, he went about healing all who were afflicted of the devil. He didn't heal some. He healed all. And if you hold on to that power today, your healing will be assured as well. Your liberty will be guaranteed in the mighty name of Jesus. And one other benefit is that we become children of God. We become children of God because we are now connected to him. Because we hold on to him, we've become children of God. Not just some people that live on the earth, but children of God. John 1, 12. 
John 1, 12 tells us, But as many as I receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Because we believe on his name, we believe on the fact that he died and resurrected for us, we have become children of God. And you know how you treat your children. If your child wants something, you give that child. If you have to do double shift to be able to make sure your child is good, you do it because you want to make sure your child is fine. If we are children of God, we know that he can go to bat for us. Praise the Lord. We're no longer slaves to fear. We now live a blessed life because we are his children. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So there are some prerequisites for the power of resurrection to work for us. What are those prerequisites? What are those things that we need to do? What are those things that we need to do very well in order for us to benefit from the power of resurrection? One that I know we're all aware of is that we need to give our lives to Christ. John 3.16 that we read, he said he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, which means there's a decision that has to be made, we have to believe in him we have to give our lives to him. We have to accept him and confess him as our Lord and personal Savior. Believe that he rose from the dead. Once we have that relationship, now we are in a position to benefit from the power of resurrection. Praise the Lord. We have to become new men. We have to determine to die to sin, to become regenerated. The same power that, that, that raised him from the dead, we too can die to sin and then be renewed, become new men in him. Praise the Lord. That power can help us to become renewed, to become new in him, to have the spirit of God in us, and we have to walk with him, and confess our sins, uh, turn from those sins, and walk with him. And the Lord will accept us in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's not something that we just do once and we forget about it. We have to remain consecrated unto him. We have to remain holy, live a holy life, live a life of holiness so that every point in time, no sin is found in us. And we may say, how easy can that be? It's doable with the power of resurrection. We just ask the Lord to help us and we can live a life of holiness, a life that is committed to God, a life that is committed to doing only the things that God wants us to do. Matthew 5:48. Matthew 5, 48, it says, You therefore will be perfect, growing into spiritual maturity, both in mind and character, actively integrating godly values into your daily life, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I love the Amplified Version, because it tells us that we have to actively integrate godly values into our daily lives. Every day as we go about, we have to decide that we want to live holy, we want to live holy. We don't want to go into the world. We don't want to go back into the world of sin. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. We have to daily set aside the sin and those things that pull us down. We have to set them aside and keep our focus on Jesus Keep our focus on Jesus. The video we listened to earlier, a uh, very, very, very serious one. I was deeply touched. said, listen to the voice. The Holy Spirit is already in us. We have to keep our focus on him, listen to the voice, so that he can guide us and direct us in the path that we should go. Then we can become eligible to benefit from the power of resurrection. Praise the Lord. We also need another level of intimacy with God. So thank God we are in the month of inti divine intimacy. We need another level of intimacy with God. We can't just say we go to church every Sunday and we go home. 
And that's it. We need to cultivate a relationship with him. We need to build a closer relationship with him. Because that is the way we will now learn to hear from him. We will now learn to recognize when that voice is speaking to us. That yes, this is God speaking to us. So we need a very close relationship with God. Very important. Philippians 3, 7 to 11. Bro, Paul speaking in Philippians 3, 7 to 11. It says, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him, in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. When I read that particular verse, verse 10, I was touched, you know, over and over again every time I read it, that Paul, after having done so much for God, was still saying that I may know him. You cannot know God enough. We cannot get familiar with God and say, because I've read the Bible last year or I went to church last year, I already know everything there is to know. Or somebody is preaching and you say, it doesn't really matter. I know where that is going. Paul said that I may know him. Brethren, for each and every one of us today, we need to make the same confession. They make, this, make the same decision that we want to know God. We want to know him. We want to know him. We want to have an intimate relationship with him. For that is where we can hear his voice. He says, uh, my, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. Right? The only way you can know the voice of someone is when you are familiar with the person. When you know the person well enough. 20 years later, I had, a, I had a friend of mine, an old friend, call me last week. I had not spoken to him in 13 years. I heard the voice. I'm like, hmm, I know exactly who that is. If I didn't know him before, I wouldn't be able to know his voice. If we don't have a relationship with God, it will be difficult to know when he's speaking to us. So it's important that we key into that level of intimacy that we have been trusting God for this month. And the Lord will give us the grace to be closer and closer to him in the mighty name of Jesus. Another very important thing is we have to come out of this world. We have to come out of the world, rather. Come out of the world. It says we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So we have to recognize that. If you remember in Luke 12, 5, that we read earlier as part of the text, it says, why do you look for the living among the dead? Which means the living is not meant to be among the dead. Just like you don't have people going to live in the graveyard, right? It's abnormal. You don't find the living amongst the dead. As children of God who are now living in the spirit, we are alive. The people in the world are dead because they are still in the sin. So the question for you and I is this. Are we staying amongst the dead? So why do you look for the living amongst the dead? If people were to look amongst the dead, will they find you there? Or will they find you amongst the living? Praise the Lord. Let's come out of it. And let's come out of the world and remember that we have to be aligned with Christ. We have to be aligned with God at all times. Praise the Lord. Feel, flee from every appearance of evil. He didn't even say confirm that it's evil first before you flee. Once it appears to be evil, flee from it. The Lord will give us the grace to do that in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans 8 verses 6 and 7. Romans 8 verses 6 and 7. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So if you stay in the world, it's death. If you stay in the world, it's death. If you stay in the spirit, then you have life. Praise the Lord. Do not be found amongst the dead if you are living. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in addition, if I've done all these things, how can I make this power of resurrection work for me? Now, these are, I talked about prerequisites, the things that we have to do in order to actually have access to the power of resurrection. 
Now, once you've done all those things, there are a few things that we have to do. One, we have to pray. We know about the power of resurrection. We know that we now have access to it. The Bible tells us in Matthew 7, 7, that we should ask and it will be given. We should seek and we will find. We should keep knocking. We should knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open. So the fact that you now have access to the power of resurrection does not mean automatically it's just there. You still need to ask and seek God and ask God that you want that power to work for you. Convert that power. Ask God that the power should start to work concerning that situation and go to him regularly about it. And the Lord will do that for you in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, seek him always and seek the power of resurrection. And as you seek him, the Lord will grant you everything that you seek in the mighty name of Jesus. Another important thing that we need to do is we need to believe. We need to have faith and trust that yes, indeed, that power is available for us. And believe that Christ died and resurrected for us. And believe as well that whatever it is you're trusting him for, he can do for you. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must know, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So as you believe him, as you believe in the power of resurrection, the power of resurrection will bring to life every dead thing in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hopeless situation will receive life and will come to fruition in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. It says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Praise the Lord. Let us come to him. Let us draw near to God. If you draw near to him, it will draw near to us. If you draw near to him in your daily lives, it will draw near to you. And if God is with you, nothing can come against you. If God is with you, nothing can be against you because God is with you. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, in those days when a child commits an offense, he runs to an older person and holds the older person. And even though you as the father or the mother want to punish him or her, you're like, you hold on because you know you can't do it right there because it's holding on to a, older, to, to a higher power. And the same way, when you hide under the shadow, when the Lord hides you under his shadow, nothing can by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. In conclusion, therefore, as Christians, Jesus died for our sin and he resurrected on the third day. We've been talking about the power of authority. By his resurrection, he took authority over sin, over death, over the devil, over so many things in this world. And he gave us power over all things. He gave us authority over all things. And by the power of resurrection that has been made available to us, we are able to operate in that dominion. We are able to operate in that authority. Brethren, I want to encourage you this morning to hold on to that power of, of, of resurrection, to, to, to hang on to that power of resurrection, to look up to Jesus, to keep Christ as our focus, because he will allow that power to work for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil, sickness, disease operating in our lives, as the power of resurrection come upon us, it will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. But that can only happen if we have Christ in our lives. That can only happen if we have a relationship with him. That can only happen if we've met the prerequisite to call on that power, to draw on that power. So as our senior pastor will come forward today, that's another opportunity for us to rededicate our life to Christ, to give our life to Christ. I encourage you to jump forward as she calls you forward today. And the Lord will receive you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Because he lives, I can face. Because he lives. Let's rise up on our feet. All fear is gone. Because I know he owns my future. And life is what a living just Want us to bow down our heads and talk to God. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. He and forgive. He lived and died. To buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior, because he lives, because he lives. I confess tomorrow, because he lives. There is God because I know, I know He owes my future and I have Life is only worth living because Jesus lives. I want all heads bowed and all eyes closed. Is Jesus in the boat of your life? Do you know him? Are you in God? Is God in you? Have you surrendered your life to him? If you have not, I want you to consider surrendering your life to him. Just wave your right hand wherever you are. Lift it up and wave it to Jesus. And you, Jesus... I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. He sees you. He brought you here. And he wants to save your life. Why don't you talk to him? You can walk to the altar and say, on this Easter, I surrender to God. Oh, you have given your life to God before and you made an error and you missed it. He wants to show you his love. Why don't you rededicate your life to him again? And say, I miss it. But Lord, here I am. Yes, talk to him. Surrender. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. And he will save you. He has gone to the cross 2,000 years ago. Just because of you and me. Lord, as many as made the decision today to surrender their life unto you. The Bible says, if anyone come unto you, you will in no wise cast them out. I pray, King of glory, that you will save souls here today. Heal. Forgive. Empower us. To live our life to please you. Empower us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We renew our commitment unto you today. Help us Holy Spirit. And we know with every assurance that because you live all of us can face tomorrow. Thank you for your son that has brought the word. I pray for greater empowerment and greater grace, even as he do the work of God. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Because he lives, I can face
Hallelujah. Amen. In continuation of the celebration of uh, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be having a Thanksgiving. That is the Easter month end Thanksgiving. That's the number one on the list. Yeah, we're going to be having a baby dedication and then birthday Thanksgiving uh, for three uh, families. Hallelujah. So we are starting with the Easter month end Thanksgiving. So please package your offering. If you don't have an envelope, you can uh, signify, raise up your hand. The ushers are around to give you an envelope. The ushers are ready, so Amen. please can we rise up? The ushers will direct us, and then we all dance forward to uh, celebrate today our victory. Victory over the power of death. Victory over sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, I say, shall we please all rise up, and let's dance to the glory of God today. Amen. Shall we rise on our feet? Hallelujah. Thank you. 
song. I think the minister sang it when he was preaching. He said, he said, because he lives, I can face. Sing it all over here. Hosea is God.
Lift up your hands and thank God once again. Father, we are grateful. How can we thank you enough for preserving us from last year till now? Lord, by the virtue of our thanksgiving, we commit you to keep us. Everyone dancing today, online and on site, you will not be missing in 2025 Easter. In the name of Jesus. May the Almighty God preserve you. May the Lord keep keeping you. May the one who is the resurrection and the power fortify your life with his power. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I decree that anything dead in your life, in your body, in your destiny, arise now in the name of Jesus. No more pain. The Lord will keep you dancing. The Lord will keep you laughing. The Lord will keep you rejoicing. The Lord will keep you jubilating. It shall be well with you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the royal ambassadors. They have been on retreat since Friday. And we can see the Holy Spirit in their life. May the Lord fortify you. Your teenage years will be beautiful. No devil will snatch you away from your heritage. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord multiply wisdom, knowledge, and strength unto you. In Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody shout a better hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May rejoicing never cease from our lives and our homes and our families in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, there was an alert flashed earlier on. I was told to lay emphasis on that. If that's your car, your attention is urgently needed immediately outside for you to repack. Uh, we continue and next on the list here is a baby dedication for Ireolua Emmanuel Olagoke. Hallelujah. The family and every one of us, let's rejoice with the family as they move to the back and then dance forward. Amen.
Praise the name of the Lord. Congratulations, congratulations. We bless the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Big, big God. Mighty God. Miracle worker. The mathematician of heaven. Great physician. Creator. Immortal, invisible, miracle worker, way maker. We thank you. We thank you for turning the expectation of your daughter to manifestation. Thank you for the conception and the courage. And the delivery of Ireolua Emmanuel Olaguge. Today, we bring him and present him to you upon this altar in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is a miracle. His conception is a miracle. The journey of his life will be filled with miracles. By the virtue of your presence on this altar, I decree over your life, Emmanuel, that God's presence will surround you. Amen. In the journey of life, you will never be alone. Amen. God will walk you through this life. Amen. You will experience victory at every stage. Amen. By your virtue on this altar, I decree that heaven will alter Everything that is not part of your destiny. Every ancestral curse. Every generational curses. Every generational limitation. I erase it completely. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. Keep you. Your growth and development will be monitored by heaven. It shall be well with you. You will live in peace. In the name of Jesus. This life. That God has given to you. It shall be lived fully. Amen. Nothing will cut it short. Amen. No sickness will cut it short. Amen. No demonic power will cut it short. Amen. Lord once again. I soak him in the blood. Amen. The blood will speak over your life. Amen. Thank you for the parents. What a joy to have Christ. Thank you for destiny fulfilled. Thank you. I commit the mother unto you. I pray that you will give her more grace. Amen. More grace to look unto you. Amen. More grace to believe you. Amen. Lord, I pray for replenishment. Amen. The Lord will give you grace to be a mother. Amen. Nothing will cut your joy short. Amen. Thank you for the father of this baby. I pray for you that the arrival of Emmanuel into your life will open doors for you. Amen. The Lord will bless you. Amen. You will never lack resources. Amen. Even to care for this gift of God in your hand. God will shower you with more gift. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Shall be well with you. Lord, I use this miracle baby. As a point of contact. To everyone under the anointing of my voice today. That has listened to this testimony. And they have claimed their own children. I declare and decree, I stand on this altar of God. And I declare and decree that your wombs will carry pregnancy. Let the resurrection power quicken your wombs to carry your own babies. In the name of Jesus, your long time in the waiting room will be turned to mighty testimony. It is your turn. Receive your own baby. Your 27th anniversary gift will not miss you. Lord, take all the glory and do more and more. Thank you for twins and triplets because you will do it. We give you praise and glory 
In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, hallelujah. Uh, well, let me just, don't be in a hurry to go because Emmanuel brought food. And they will give you the food during the closing prayer. Also, I want to present this certificate of dedication to the parents of Irelua Emmanuel Olagoge. Congratulations. Congratulations. Amen. Praise God. See the way you love me. See the way you Lastly, we have three birthday thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, three, we are going to call the three together. Uh, number one here is um, Joshua and Israel, Tiamiu, celebrating first birthday. Uh, the uh, twins that came forth last year, they already won. Is God not good? Hallelujah. Then number two here, we have Desiri Osato Ad Ad Adolphus. He is celebrating 10th birthday, 10th birthday. And then we have Jemima Oshideni celebrating 16th birthday. Uh, can we hold on, please? Please keep it low, please. Um, Joshua and Israel Tiamiu will come from the middle highs here. Uh, Desiri Osato Adolphus will come from this side. And then Jemima Osiden, celebrating his birthday, will come through the eyes to my right here. So, church, as we have been celebrating, uh, let's continue in that mood of celebration. Let's rise up and let's rejoice with these three families as they celebrate the birthday, birthday of their children. Hallelujah. Shall we arise?
name of the Lord. Somebody scream, God is good. We bless the name of the Lord. Desiree, how old are you? Ten. Scream hallelujah. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Jemama. Here she is. How old are you now? Sweet 16. Sweet 16. And we have the twins here. Isn't God good? Joshua and Israel. Praise God. Congratulations to all the celebrants. Let us pray. The mighty God. We salute your excellency. Today, with a heart full of thanksgiving, we give you all the glory. Thank you for the twins, Joshua and Israel. Thank you for their conception. Thank you for keeping them. Growth and development in the last one year. Thank you for sustaining them. I pray that the God who brought you to life, he will walk you through life. Amen. There will be no evil. Amen. The Lord will guide you and lead you. Amen. Mighty God, I pray for Jemima. We want to thank you for her life. Thank you for bringing her to teenage years. As she celebrates this sweet 16, I decree your life will be sweet. Amen. The Lord will keep you. Amen. No evil will come near you. Amen. The Lord will add many more years to you. Amen. Lord, we thank you for desire. A decade of your faithfulness. We want to thank you for your faithfulness. That has released life unto her. I pray that your life will be sustained by God. Amen. The Lord will grant you many more years. You will celebrate many more. Yes. Years of joy. Years of peace. You will be a joy to your parents. They are celebrating over you today. I declare and decree that your parents will not see your end in the name of Jesus. The Lord will preserve you. Mighty God, we are thanking you. Nobody can add a second without you. Here we are today with full joy. Multiply this joy for us. Lord, we give you praise. I cover all these children with the blood of Jesus. The blood will keep you. The blood will sustain you. The blood will flush out everything that is not of God out of your life. Your destiny will come to full maturity. Cover their parents with the blood of Jesus. The Lord will give you more joy. You will not sorrow over this one. The hand of the Lord will be upon you. Glory and honor be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Hallelujah, one. Joshua and Israel. Hallelujah, two. Hallelujah, three. Hallelujah, four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Hallelujah. Ten. Eleven. Hallelujah, twelve. Hallelujah, thirteen. Hallelujah, fourteen. Hallelujah, fifteen. Sixteen. Jemima. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear brethren. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord 
bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Celebrants. May the good Lord bless you. Hip, hip, hip. Congratulations! You are wonderful, yeah. You are wonderful, yeah. You are wonderful, yeah. Wonderful, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. name of the Lord. Such joy that God has given us today will never cease in our homes in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Most High God. This joy will be multiplied. Please, as has been announced, we have some refreshments, courtesy of the Olagoke family. All the teenagers in the, in the auditorium will please go to their church, the teenage church. They have their served already waiting for them. All the teenagers. The church, please remain seated and you will be served. The ministers, when you go up to pray, the Lord will bless all of us in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Most High God. Praise the name of the Most High God. You came to fellowship here in Dominion Cathedral. This is your first day of worship on a Sunday like this. And you are here in the auditorium. Praise the name of the Lord. You are here for the first time. Can you just wave? You are in, in the midst of the people. Here, today is your first time. You are here, you are seated here. Can you be upstanding? Our pastor will want to shake your hands. If you are in the auditorium and today is your first day, please come forward. Hallelujah. You will go with the, the hospitality team. The Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And please, let's uh, be reminded... That the America for Christ soul winning campaign, soul winning program is still on. If you have not submitted any names of your loved ones, those you want to be one to Christ, please you still have opportunity to do so. Ask the ushers for the forms and we want to lift up all the names that have been submitted already to the almighty God and we pray. That the Holy Spirit will minister to them by himself in the mighty name of Jesus. And that power that raised our Lord Jesus Christ will turn them around. And bring them to Christ in Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen. As we want to bring the service to a close now, please can we all be upstanding. Hallelujah. Let's all please be upstanding. 
and lift up our hands and just take this short song. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit praises His name for that could not hold him captive even in the grave Jesus is Lord for that could not hold him captive even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Before we share the grace, please be reminded all those who are 40 and above that there is a meeting of the elders fellowship. It will be a very short meeting just to say happy Easter to each and every one of us. And I believe... Um, Dr. Adetule and his family are hosting uh, and uh, blessing everybody. So please, even if you have not been coming before, make sure you step into the children's church immediately after the service. And God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. The grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And before we take the motto, I want to announce to you that we still have vacancy in the elder choir. Hallelujah! Up elders, we still have vacancy, especially men, men. We still have vacancy. The Lord will bless you as you join in Jesus' name. The motto, one, two, go. This is my year of divine repositioning. God will pleasantly reposition me to higher grounds. God will relocate me to the place of honor. God's power and presence will reposition me to the, from the valley to the mountain top, from weakness to strength, and from sickness to perfect health. God will attend specially to all my needs this year. This year I will have peace and rest on every side. Help and helpers of my destiny from the four corners of the world shall locate me. 2024 will be failure-free, tension-free, sickness-free, and crisis-free for me. I will not derail, diminish, or dwindle. I will grow from strength to strength and from victory to victory. I decree that this year, everyone fighting against me will fall for me to rise. Every unrepentant enemy against my life will suffer permanent damage, calamity, an irreversible defeat. No matter how much the enemies try, they will not overcome me this year. According to Job 8.22, those that hate me shall be clothed with shame. The power of God will silence every opposition against my life. The everlasting hands will surely carry me through this year. I will not die prematurely. I will experience all-round joy. It is well with me. Amen. Tell somebody it is well with them. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. It is well with you too in Jesus' name. Shalom.